Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by Autoclose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guests and maybe uh, tell the audience what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah. So uh, for anybody who knows uh, a bit about my background, I I've always worked in lead gen in some way, form or another, and I find it quite interesting how um that that term lead gen gets banded around. There's several different meanings of it. And today, I guess Nick Verity, um, his company by by design, or oh, literally reading his LinkedIn profile, it says providing services lead generation. So, what better way to start the episode than uh, the Nick? Welcome to the show, and um, and why don't you tell us a bit about what you do, but also what you what you mean by that word lead generation? Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, exactly what we do is we actually niche down to LinkedIn. And so we help businesses get leads strictly on LinkedIn, um, which sounds like a small niche and maybe people have a connotation of it being spammy, but we found a way that really makes it work and gets our clients a lot of leads. And so um, the ads work pretty well. We're about 20 employees now, a little close to, to 5 million in, in revenue. Nice. So just starting out, I know there, there's always, you know, there's been a, I always said 2014, when I started my first business, LinkedIn was not saturated. And then there's been a lot of companies that have kind of come into the game. So what specifically do you guys help with on LinkedIn? Do you guys use any, you know, are those automation tools, any of those CRM, LinkedIn CRM tools, or are there any, any yeah. the tech stuff you use for your clients? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, it's fully done for you service. And there is some automation involved. So um, we do what a lot of other people do is we build targeting lists, we write copy, and then we automate outreach. Um, Our differentiator is the way we go about it. Our lists are really small, hyper niches of only relevant prospects. That's a huge reason for spam is you're getting messages from someone who's selling you that something you have no use for. And so just very, very niche down lists one at a time so that even though it's automated one to many, there's a personalizer that fits for everyone in a, in a list. Um, and which brings me to the second point that most people fail at is they connect and pitch, spray and pray, whatever in the messaging, uh, long and salesy. Our stuff is like super short. We don't pitch until the third touch. And what we found most success with is like just starting sales conversations in touch too. So after someone accepts a connection request, we just like ask a super good discovery question and it starts a conversation, builds a relationship. So that's kind of our, our flow. So take us back to how did you start this? So I, I want to know, um, I've always thought like, so you're latching on the LinkedIn, obviously that's a really massive platform, like hundreds of millions of users. That's one way to define you've got a market for this, right? Um, if it's something they can use or people do that for like Shopify or Salesforce, other things like that. Did you look at that? Was it more like I'm, I know how to write this and do it let's do it this way or, or what kind of gave you the impetus to say, we're going to do this and do it how you are doing it uh, on, on LinkedIn specifically. Yeah. Like how, how did the idea for I'm going to do a company uh, myself yeah. and it's going to be this come about? Yeah. So it's actually, I have a 50, 50 business partner and he, um, he was like the only SDR at a company that sold into enterprise multifamily, like apartment building owners. And he had to get his own leads And so he's like, this is so hard. And then he found um, tools on LinkedIn that automate outreach. So he did it for himself in the company and it like crushed it. Like he was closing like massive deals, like huge names in the multifamily space. And um, he's like, all right, I'm gonna quit and make this an agency. So that's, it's actually his idea. And that's how, that's how it started. So, so I know with LinkedIn, cause uh, as I said, I, I, I actually, to be honest, I used AutoClose and LinkedIn specifically to grow AutoClose at the beginning. We did no cold outreach. We did only LinkedIn touches. Um, and that was before it was saturated. But then LinkedIn kind of started to really get tight with people sending out cold emails. So have you had any issues with your clients? Because I know you're only allowed certain connections a day, certain messages a day. Any issues with LinkedIn, seasoned assists or anything like that, that they've come to you and said, hey, you shouldn't be using any automation tools for your clients, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we've heard of them doing that to to others, but yeah. the main thing that they've done over the years is restricted like um, the total amount of connection requests you can send. Yeah, and so they've you know we used to send two thousand connection requests a month. Now we only send four hundred. Um, <laughs> yeah, those were those were the glory days, but it actually helps because now there's less spam on the platform. But 
Um, there's that. Now you can't have fake profiles, to be honest. Like when we started, we used to have like 20 fake profiles to help us get leads. You can no longer yeah. do that. They'll pretty much shut it down really quickly. So we never do that anymore um, amongst a couple other things. But that's the, that's mainly it. So how does that impact your business model? And so that, that's a significant change. You can't play like add new profiles for volume, for example, or it continuously gets a little bit less and less and less. So how, and your price point obviously is probably going to stay the same. Your value prop is still reasonably the same, but the way that it's working and applied is different. How much have you had to refine what you do and how you package it? Um, a lot. Like a lot of it comes down to the strategy. Uh, we were surprised that when we're only sending 400 connection requests, but we can get 30% to accept. So it's over 100 then of that, we can still start several positive conversations slash leads a month. So we lowered our expectations a little bit during the sales process, but it's still really effective. And there's like, if you're in our world, you know that one of the biggest reasons for churn is clients can't keep up with their inbox. Like it's kind of convoluted. The LinkedIn inbox kind of sucks. And so um, 2000 was actually too much volume. Like it's kind of overwhelming. And so we just toned it down a little bit and then got real like niche and smart with our strategy, um, which has been like equally effective almost. Now, I, I'm not sure if this has affected you, but you know, LinkedIn's always changing their APIs. They're always changing the rules. They're always changing what you can and can't do. Has that ever affected your business? Like you guys have to change your model, your flow and stuff because one day LinkedIn just says, okay, well now you can do this or you can do this or you can't do this. Um, any changes or any obstacles you guys have had faced as a company? Um, yeah, I mean, the, these kind of things happen all the time where the software is down for a day or two because LinkedIn changed their API. Um, like that, that stuff absolutely happens. Um, but as, as, a, as a whole, nothing's really been too bad. They do this new thing on LinkedIn where it's like, if you send too many connection requests in a week, they give you a warning. It yeah. used to be that there was a risk of your profile losing um, your ability to send connection requests. Like you'd have to enter an email to connect with someone. So I had they actually that. have I a had new that. system that I like much better. <laughs> so yeah. <did> I. <laughs> yeah, like that was a huge problem. Like we had- I had that where I had to add people's emails. <laughs> yeah, like that That sucks. And so um, I'm. we've never had that happen. We had it happen early in our early days. We haven't hap had it happen since they like, restricted outreach to 400 connection requests. So um, I think that's protected the end user and us and our clients. So as I'm thinking about it, so you do LinkedIn and a lot of people, um, they, they say like social selling or whatever you want to call it. You can go across other networks. I would never Facebook message someone. Um, maybe I'll Twitter DM them potentially. Um, any plans for that? Is that? Is it like a conscious object, like reason to stay with LinkedIn or, or something in between? Yeah. I mean, this kind of goes back to both your points. Like we're a little bit at the mercy of LinkedIn. Um, like they are our channel or built on top of, you know, and so um, we are trying to diversify. So there's a couple of ways. Number one, uh, we do LinkedIn content now. So posting on the news feed, turning people into mini influencers, it can be effective uh, if done right. And then cold email is a big push for us right now. So we're um, that's really just the same thing on LinkedIn. It's cold email. It's cold outreach. So we're doing that on email pretty effectively now. That's a small portion of our revenue, but it's a huge goal this year. Um, and so, yeah, because you can't DM people on Twitter or Facebook. So that's it's cold email and then posting content on LinkedIn. That's like our focus. And who were some of your first hires at the company? Um. Okay, so our very first hire was my partner, my partner's friend was like a car mechanic. And so he came in and became our ops guy. And he would just like, you know, jump in between like all these accounts back in the day when you had all had to run tools and Chrome extensions on everyone's account. So he was our first, our first guy. And then our second guy was an account, a really high level account manager. Cause once we hit like, I don't know, 150 accounts. Me and Bruce were doing everything, taking sales calls, managing accounts, writing copy. And so um, that sucked because we hired that guy and our our salary went from like already low to lower and, and he was making more than us. So those were our first two hires. They're still with us today, almost five years later. Um, and they've been like, they've been huge. 
So how does it go from like what you did in the beginning, and obviously there's been changes to what you're going to do and exactly how like velocity wise and volume. Is there like a, a bigger client where you can charge more, or like a bigger number of users that you're going to charge for something like that to help it grow? Where like in in a software company, it's obviously same price, number of users. So for someone like Order Close, you've got to add loads and loads of users to get bigger or you have a bulk deal like how how has there been a way for you to ramp up and and hopefully start paying yourselves higher than you just described like at the start obviously that's going to be part of it but down the road you don't want that forever right yeah i mean that's quite interesting because um our clients are like sometimes one employee or no employees all the way up to 10 to 15 our our highest spending clients are as we go up market because they're adding five sales reps, they're adding 10 seats, 10, 10 accounts. Um, our only thing is like, we don't really have a way of going after them because all our leads as a company are inbound. So like we run Google ads heavy. Um, we get a ton of referrals. Like we do these podcasts and things. And so like, we'll take anyone who comes to us with a good business um, and that can afford us. And so that's kind of our thing is like, we help like helping the little guy, but um, um, our best clients do tend to have sales teams that they can scale to. I think that's just the reality. I think we do. I know of some competitors that have gone up market and strictly targeted like bigger, big companies with like hundreds of reps. That works too. Um, we've just like had so much success with like micro SMBs that we're just hanging out here. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because you've got to, and that's difficult too, because if you want to add reps to it, for example, arguably they get in like the same thing and they could pay for it once unless you're making it very, very different. Have you run into that? Um, Not too much because each client, each rep has their own territory and needs a little bit of their own strategy, but we run discounts. So if you have five or more accounts, yes, like we'll knock 20% off your price for that reason that there's less work to do. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, so switching gears a little bit, um, I love to know for any mistakes that you guys have made. Like the more painful the better if you're cool with sharing it. Um, Sean has told me plenty of the ones that he's made, but I'm sure, particularly in the early days, that's what people normally say is like, Oh yeah, man, early on this one was a nightmare. So any that come to mind? Okay, I'll I'll give you two. So one, um I made the mistake I think most business owners, especially small agency owners, get stuck at, which is I'm the only one who's good at doing this. So like I used to think I'm the only one who can like come up with a good campaign. If someone else does it, our client will churn and hate us and ask for a refund. That was like, there's probably six months where we should have hired our, that first account manager early and just sucked it up with money. Because as soon as we hired him- I still think like that, by the way. Yeah, no, no, no I do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do too. But like, and it's funny because dude, my like, yeah, I know like- way older people who've been doing business for 25, 30 years. And they still have like, they still haven't scaled for that reason, which is fine. You know, if that's your game, but for us, like Bruce hasn't taken a sales call in probably two years. I haven't taken a sales call in two, like that stuff totally hurts scale. Um, and then the second mistake was after we got scale, right? So we honestly, we flatlined the last two years, we hit 4.7 million in revenue and like, three and a half years, but like we flatlined since then. Um, the reason for that is we keep trying new services and they keep failing. So like we were like starting all these like crazy, like design as a service, like stuff outside our core competency. And it wasted a ton of time, a ton of like my, all our executives time, money, marketing spend, whatever. I think what we've learned is like the only two services that caught on were services that Prospects were already asking our sales reps for like cold email and LinkedIn content. And we kind of ignored those um, for whatever reason. And so I think if we just like stuck to what we knew was going to be easier to sell uh, and is in our wheelhouse, we wouldn't have wasted over a year trying to start like random new services like SEO, like start trying to offer crazy stuff. Um, that was like a huge mistake. I think that why we flatlined recently. So are you guys, uh, I haven't asked, are you guys bootstrapped or do you guys raise money? Bootstrap. Very nice. And uh, where do you see LinkedIn and what are your plans for, I guess, the rest of 2023? Any changes you see upcoming for LinkedIn um, or anything you guys are planning for? And then also, 
Um, what are you guys planning on? How are you guys planning on growing the business uh, this year? Yeah, um, content's becoming a bigger thing. More CEOs are starting to post on LinkedIn because they realize like the benefits of that. Uh, will that cause saturation? Like maybe people have been saying like LinkedIn is saturated for so long and it is if you're not using the right strategies. So I think you'll start to see more like people try posting on LinkedIn um, for sure, but it's still like untapped in my opinion. Most people like there's some stat, like only 2% of people post on LinkedIn. Um, and then the second thing is like, we're going global this year. So we have clients from all over the world but we can't service European time zones. And so we just hired a guy um, in Europe, sales rep and account manager. So I'm excited to like grow into some of those markets, not as big as the US, but the totality of the UK plus wherever is pretty big. Um, and then I was telling you guys earlier, cold email as a service we want, we want to blow up too. Perfect. Well, just let everyone know, Nick, uh, how they can get a hold of you and, um, and your company. Just go to cleverly.co. That's our website. And there's like a ton of free guides on there that I pretty much give away our whole strategy. Um, and you can execute on your own. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. And thank you for everyone that has been listening. Um, if you enjoyed the show today, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. Thanks again. Um, and Nick and Ollie, thank you guys again. Thank you.